everyone, welcome to my channel, Notes from the Sewing Room. My name's Becky. Thanks for joining me today. My channel is all about my sewing and dressmaking adventures, so if that's something that interests you, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos here on my YouTube channel. But today's video is all about my top five makes that I made during 2020. So stay tuned and you'll hear what my favourites were. It's taken me a little bit of time to have a think about what my real favourites were of 2020 in terms of things that I made. As you know, if you do watch my channel regularly, I do make quite a lot of clothes, um, mainly for myself, sometimes my husband. I've made a couple of bits and pieces for my new little boy, William, but mainly I'm quite selfish, I guess, and I, I mainly make things for myself. So. The outfits that I've chosen to show you today are all things that I've enjoyed wearing during 2020. Obviously, we've not really been going anywhere, we've mainly been staying at home. So I think probably these things kind of reflect what I've been doing basically, but I really love each of them and I definitely recommend you try these patterns if you haven't already. So let's get to it and I'll tell you what my favourites were. Before I get into actually showing you what I've actually made in terms of my outfits, I would like to say that my absolute favourite make ever is of course my new baby boy William. So I've just got him here at the moment, so I just wanted to bring him on for a second, but I shall now show you the bits and pieces that I actually made in terms of sewing. I will insert pictures of me wearing each of these garments as well, just so you get a bit of a flavour of what they look like in total. And by the way, if you are interested today, today in what I'm wearing, I am wearing one of my favourite Sew Over It Edie Top. So if I just move my hair, you can see. So we've got this lovely boat neckline here. You, you probably recognise this t-shirt if you've watched any of my other videos. It's one that I made during the summertime and this fabric's from by Brazilla Fabrics and I really like it. It's a, just a, a lovely pop of colour and um, I, I love wearing bright colours. It just makes me feel really sort of happy and upbeat. So yeah, this is right up my street. But Anyway, let's get to it. So the first one that I wanted to share with you is a denim jacket that I made. So I'm so proud of this denim jacket. It's not something that I've ever tackled before. And the pattern is the Sorrento jacket from the Sew Over It Summer Dreaming ebook that came out. I am desperate to make another one of these jackets, maybe in another color denim, or perhaps maybe in a, I don't know, maybe like a stiffer sort of velvet material or something like that but I absolutely love this denim jacket. It's not had loads and loads of wear, but when I have worn it, I felt lovely wearing it, if that makes sense. So it's got some lovely details, and um, it's, it's, there's a few different pieces, obviously, that come together to form the jacket. I'm just gonna hold this up so you can see. So I've used jeans buttons down the front of the jacket here, which I was really proud of that I managed to hammer those in myself. You probably can't see, but it's got a number of different panels that kind of form the front section here. I used my white overlocker um, thread on the inside. It's got quite a lot of top stitching detail that you have to do, which does take a little bit of time, but I finished the cuff off there with some spotted bias binding on the inside of the cuff and a jeans button just to close there. So yeah, I really like this. It looks absolutely lovely over a, a summer dress, a skirt, that type of thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of this and I definitely recommend you try the pattern because I was worried about trying this pattern to be honest because I didn't know like how I was gonna get on with it didn't know if I was going to enjoy it, if it was going to take me absolutely ages, if I'd kind of lose the love for the pattern by the end of it, but I completely didn't. I, I really enjoyed making it and it actually came together a lot quicker than I thought it would. Obviously, it being a jacket, it's not a really quick make, but if you spend the time doing it, you'll be surprised, you know, that it is actually not as time consuming as, as you might think it might be. So I can't really remember exactly how long it took, but I think I, I had it done in, you know, two or three days with bits and pieces of time here and there. So yeah, I really like it. The collar details lovely as well. And it looks really nice with a little pin badge on there. So that's my first one that I wanted to share with you today and definitely a pattern that I would recommend. The next thing that I want to share with you today is a shirt project. Again, something that I have loved wearing and I loved making as well. Again, I was a little bit nervous about actually making this project because I'm not very good with collars. I, I get a little bit nervous about doing collars and I was a bit nervous about doing the burrito method to kind of make all the insides lovely and neat in this project. But I was really surprised that again, this project came together quickly um, in terms of a shirt project. 
and that the instructions in the pattern were superb and it really held my hand through each of the different steps. I'd never done the burrito method before. As I say, I was concerned about not doing it properly, if I'd be able to do it, if my skills were up to it and all of that, but I really shouldn't have worried because it was super. This is the Gilbert Top by Helen's Closet Patterns and I went for the tied version here, so it's kind of the cropped version with the little tie at the front. So we've got three buttons that finish the shirt down here. It's got this lovely collar detail round there. I used a cotton poplin fabric to make this project, but I think it'd be lovely in a cotton lawn or anything with a bit of um, structure that's still quite lightweight, if that makes sense. So you'll see that I've done the burrito method on the inside here, so it's lovely and neat on the inside. So I was, I was so proud that I managed to do that. And I like that the sleeves are not too short, but equally they're not too long. So yeah, I, re I really like the tie detail at the front. And I think the best thing about about this is even though it's a cropped shirt it's not too short so it kind of sits just nicely on my waist and it goes over the top of perhaps my high-waisted jeans or my high-waisted skirts that I wear so yeah I, I really love this I've made two versions so far you can probably see in my back in the background here I've actually got another version that I'm making at the moment that one's actually in a lightweight viscose fabric so I will share that one with you hopefully in my January makes video if I manage to get it done so yeah but this is a great pattern and definitely one that you should try if you haven't already there's two different versions in the pattern pack that you can make there's this one with the tie front and there's also a longer sleeve version which has got kind of bell sleeves which is really nice. I actually made the other version that I did, um, not with the bell sleeves, but a slightly longer sleeve, and I didn't do the tie front in that version either. So, um, but yeah, this this is a lovely, lovely pattern. So if you are looking for a shirt that's going to kind of take you into spring and summer, this is one that you should try if you haven't already. The next project that I wanted to share with you is a lovely coat project that I made. This is the Tilly and the Buttons Eden Coat. It is an absolutely amazing coat. I wear it literally every day. I'm spending a lot of time at my local park and kind of walking around the local streets and that kind of thing just to get a bit of exercise with the pram. And this coat is an absolute dream to wear. It makes me feel nice when I'm wearing it. Not only that, but it's warm. And I'm just really proud that I managed to make myself a duffel coat so the idea of making a duffel coat does sound quite complicated but as you'll know if you've used any Atelier's patterns before there's always pictures to guide you through each step of the process and she's got some fantastic instructions in there as well. I made my Eden coat in a brown wool fabric and I lined the inside with a cotton sateen in this gorgeous animal print and then I did the inside of the sleeves with an anti-static lining just so basically I can get my arm in and out really easily. So I did actually do a quilted lining which is not included in the pattern pack but there's loads of instructions online of you know how to do that. I basically just to put some wadding on the back of my main bit of my lining fabric and then I drew uh, on there with chalk um, just kind of diamond shapes and then basically stitched that on on my sewing machine before attaching the arm pieces and uh, then obviously the main part of the coat as well. It's actually quite difficult to hold this duffel coat up because it is quite a, a, a big project but I just want to show you some of the details on it. So I finished off the front section here with some navy blue toggles so they're really nice and yeah, they, I think they work really nicely with the brown wool there. I'll just show you the opposite side. You will have to excuse the pockets because they are actually full of poo bags and things like that for my doggy. But I've lined the inside of the pocket there with the animal print fabric again, which I think looks really nice. And then I like the, the wooden toggles on the front of it as well. But it's a, it's a really lovely warm jacket to wear. The zip that I used is a metal open end zip. So you can see that. And like I say, it's absolutely amazing to wear. It's had, well, I can't even tell you how much wear it's had loads. I wear it, like I said, every single day. It's so warm. A lot of people have actually said to me, where did you get your coat from? You know, people that you kind of see when, when you're out and about. Um, you know, I, I wore it when, um, you know, I've, I've been to the doctors. I've worn it when I've been to the, you know, the hospital. I've worn it everywhere. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. So I really recommend that pattern. It's 
something that I never kind of dreamt that I would make for myself in terms of a duffel coat. I've always been a big admirer of duffel coats in general, but to make one yourself is just such an amazing thing to do. So if you haven't given that pattern a go, then I definitely would recommend it. You don't have to do a wool version. You could do more of a rain jacket type version. So just have a look at the instructions, check out the Tilling the Buttons website, and I'm sure you can see lots of other versions on Instagram as well. There's loads of inspiration out there, but I would recommend doing the wool version because like I say it's been lovely to wear and it's just so lovely to know that you've made it yourself and just kind of makes you feel a little bit warm inside really if that makes sense. The next project that I wanted to show you is something that I made quite late in 2020 and this is the Tilly and the Buttons Billy Top but rather than making the jumper I actually made the cardigan version so if you are interested in this project in a little bit more detail do check out my other video that I did of Matchy making this cardigan. So what I did was I joined the Billy Top to the Bertha cardigan to form this lovely cardigan and I can't tell you again how much I've been wearing this all the time it's amazing I used a Ponty Roma fabric to make this in an animal print so you can't see that too well there so let me just hold that up so you can see it a little bit more I love these ruched sleeves at the top here it's got the balloon arm should I say they're balloon sleeves and the cuff I would say if I made this again I probably would make the sleeve slightly longer I don't know if it's just because I've got quite long arms but I do find that the sleeves do come to kind of bracelet length rather than full length so I would potentially add on maybe another inch to the sleeves next time but this is a lovely lovely cardigan it kind of is a little bit 80s it's got a bit of an 80s vibe to it I think but I don't think there's anything wrong with that I've, I've always quite liked 80s fashions so it's again this this was really good to do uh, I had a few problems with my overlocker when I actually made this so my plan was to do the whole thing on the overlocker but unfortunately because I had a few issues I ended up doing some of it on my sewing machine in the end but really doesn't matter either way you can make it on your sewing machine or the overlocker and it was just just really really good so I'd love to make another version of this maybe in like a brighter colorway I'm not sure but I need some inspiration so if you have got any ideas of fabrics that this project would look lovely in then do get in touch with me in the comments below and let me know what your thoughts are also i'd love to know if you have made any of the other projects that i'm showing you today and the fabrics that you used and any tips that you've got so it's always great to hear from you the final project that i wanted to share with you today is another cardigan but another one that i have enjoyed doing and it's took me ages and ages to get around to actually making this project it's from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book I've just realized actually that I have shown a few different Tilly and the Buttons makes but I am a big fan of the Tilly pattern so if you are new to sewing there are a great place to start you don't have to dive in and do a coat or a, a hack cardigan or something like I have there's some really good beginner friendly patterns on that website so if you are new to sewing like I say look out for things like the Coco dress that they've got on there they've got a lovely pinafore the Clio they, they, there's all kinds of different things so do check out some of their other patterns uh, not just these ones but the make it simple book actually has got a number of different patterns in there that are also beginner friendly and um, Tilly's instructions are always absolutely fantastic and you know if you are nervous about any of the different steps you know it, it is a a, a great book to use because she, she does really help you out it's a great place to have a look if you are looking for some inspiration of your next makes but this is my Bertha cardigan so it's a lovely cardigan it's it's quite a cropped cardigan but again not too short because I don't know about you but when I am outside I do find that I get a bit of a draft up my back sometimes it makes me cold so this this is a nice cardigan it's got back wing sleeves which I wasn't sure about I'll be honest with you to begin with wasn't sure if I was really gonna really like them or not but I really do like this I think I made it in a Tilly and the Button size 3 and which I think is a UK size 10 but yeah it's got these lovely cuffs on there so if you can just see that I used a Ponty fabric to actually make this it was a fabric that I'd had in my stash for absolutely ages and ages I made the whole thing on my overlocker but you could do the project on your sewing machine if you haven't got an overlocker or you just don't really fancy using it for whatever reason I made it all in a red thread on my overlocker so 
just makes it lovely and neat on the inside and gives it quite a professional finish. So, so far I have made two of these Bertha cardigans and I'm sure there's going to be more to come because I, I enjoyed how speedy it was to do. Sometimes I feel like I just need a bit of a sewing fix and being a new mum, I've not got, you know, days now where I can sit down at my sewing machine and have a whole day just sewing away so I tend to do 10 minutes here 20 minutes there maybe slightly longer at the weekend if my husband's around etc but it just depends on you know what what we're doing and obviously baby comes first so um I found that putting together this cardigan even though I did it in dribs and drabs it was just it was a really lovely make to do and probably if I added up all the time it took less than two hours to do maybe an hour and a half something like that so it, yeah it was really really lovely I've worn this a fair amount of times I did find that the fabric did run in the wash a little bit which is a bit annoying but I know you can get those colour stop things to go into your washing machine um if you want to but um i think the colors probably stopped running now just about so um just one of those things isn't it what it, it wasn't a particularly expensive fabric and um i think it's just such a, a strong vibrant color that i guess it was maybe to be expected it was going to run a little bit but i don't know but it did nevertheless so but this is a lovely make it looks really nice with a denim skirt like the one that i'm wearing today and just a little jersey top underneath or probably look nice with a little shirt underneath to be honest as well or a little cami top if the weather was a bit nicer so if you haven't tried this pattern i would recommend it it's yeah just a, a bit of a staple to be honest now in my wardrobe and i wish that i got round to doing it quicker than i have so yeah it's really good but again there's loads of inspiration online of ones that other people have made in different colour ways I think you have got the potential with that cardigan to use up jersey scraps that you've got so you potentially have a different colour for the back different colours for the front panels you know different colour cuffs different colour neckbands you know whatever really but I think there's a number of different people out there that have done you know a mismatch of fabrics in terms of jersey ponty fabrics that they got left over and um, the other version that I made actually was in a true knit fabric and that worked really nicely but I think probably my favourite oh sorry if you can hear the tumble dryer I forgot that was still on um, <laughs> um, this um, I, I think I prefer it probably in the ponte because the true knit fabric stretches in all directions and it was a little bit more difficult to control on my overlocker but it was a lovely lovely fabric and I love that the fabric that I used was sparkly and I love anything sparkly so that was really good but probably if I was to make it again Long story short, I guess I'm rambling a little bit here. I would go for the Ponty. So yeah, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing those makes and it's maybe given you a little bit of food for thought of things that you might try this year if you haven't tried those patterns already. I would love to know what your favourite patterns were from 2020 or favourite things that you made. So do get in touch with me below. If you have enjoyed watching this video, I would love it if you could hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, not forgetting to press that little notification bell and then you'll be informed when I upload my next video. I do try and put two videos on my channel each week, but um, it depends you know, what time I've got, but I do aim for two videos each week if I possibly can. But thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've had to show you and have a lovely rest of the week and I'll see you soon. Bye!